Hi, my name is Ryan O'Hare. I'm a PE in the Merchant Department at High Point, North Carolina. Today we will be reviewing the article entitled Learning Theories 101 Application to Everyday Teaching and Scholarship, written by Denise Kay and Jonathan Kibble. This article uh, does a really good job of kind of outlining, you know, the major learning theories and kind of comparing and contrasting them. And that's basically what this entire article is about. Uh, at the end, it does a summary chart that basically includes all of them and does a compare and contrast and kind of breaks it down into different things that we'll talk about. Um, but the big categories are the behavioral, the cognitive, and then the constructivist. Within those categories, there are subsets to include behavioralism and the social cognitive theory underneath the behavioral aspect, the cognitive learning theory underneath the cognitive aspect, and then the constructivism and social constructivism under the constructivist aspect. So let's first start with behavioralism. Um, so within each topic, there will be how the learnings define the key principles, the learner and the teacher role, as well as the learning applications. So how we define behavioralism is the observable increases or decreases or maintenance of the identified behaviors. The key principles is a relationship between the stimulus and the response, or the influences by controlling the stimulus and the response, as well as the focus on that observable behavior. Uh, the teacher role is very active in this role. The learner is very respondent in response to those stimuli. The learning applications are more direct instruction, role, timing of feedback, meaning that, you know, it's a lot of tests where you give assessments and then they regurgitate information. The social cognitive theory, um, you can define that as observable increases and decreases in the maintenance of the behaviors with a social aspect towards that. The principles is the behavioralism plus that learner influence based on what someone else did or what they'd heard. So that's kind of another key component of it. The teacher role is, remains active, uh, extensive focus on the environment. The learner role is more active, but still their natural response to things. Their learning applications, it's more socialization, interactions, uh, with one learned influence and how that influences other learners. The cognitive learning theory, um, it's about a lot of internal mental processes. They assume the mind is an information processor, a lot of repetition, um, that learning represents effective means for storing that knowledge. The teacher is highly active. Um, they kind of group and chunk this information so that the learner can absorb this information. The learner is a very active role. They pay attention. They attempt to retain and reproduce that knowledge. The learning applications is more presentations to build on that student's prior knowledge, uh, limited to what learners can reasonably process within a given time period. So think a lot of lectures. Constructivism, you define that as an individual construction, uh, construction process. The learners are constructed knowledge as they interact with the environment. Learning is goal-driven, using prior knowledge or organize the new information. The teacher provides necessary tools as well as the opportunities for learning, um, a little bit less active, and the students are more active. So in the learner world, the learner responds to that environment or, um, or interaction versus the reaction, so the behavioral part of it. The learning applications, the teacher moves from the guide on the side instead of the stage on the stage. So that's kind of a way to remember that. And basically think of it now we're guiding them kind of on the sideline of things instead of being the, the main thing on top of the stage or just sitting in front of them and giving them a lecture. Social constructivism, um, you define that as learning that's internalization and the adaptation of the external experience. Uh, the key principle is that learning is socially motivated. The knowledge is developed by the interaction with those tools and symbols and language within that environment. The teacher role uh, uses a lot of formal and informal resources to expand the student's knowledge. Uh, learning encounters designed so the learners can face a challenge and within that social environment, and that's the key. The learner role uses tools and those symbols uh, more knowledgeable to others to master the next level of understanding so they can use other people to um, help them to get to the educational level that they need to get to. The learning applications, uh, they increase the group work and group-based learning at all educational levels. So all in all, you know, there's kind of three key uh, components of it, but five big topics that you need to review. Like I said, if you want to pull this up, there's a really good chart that kind of compares and contrasts them all. Um, but this is kind of the nitty gritty breakdown of that and all everything that this article encompasses. And there's my references.